thanks for watching. We've got Gary Lynn here today. Gary's a property coach, investor, and business manager at the BNZ. And he's here. We're going to talk about the investor property market, the property investment market, uh, and just to get his thoughts on what's happening because it's been a super hot market and there's been a couple of changes recently. So uh, thanks, Gary, for uh, dialing in. Oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, having a chat. Yeah. So, hey, tell us about what you're seeing in the market. Where, where are you based in New Zealand and what are you seeing in that market? Yeah, so I'm based in uh, Auckland uh, predominantly. Uh, a lot of my clients are kind of all, uh, mostly North Island. Um, obviously, most of them are in Auckland and then some in uh, Hamilton as well. So I kind of know, um, especially the Auckland and Hamilton market pretty well. Yeah, and, and obviously on fire at the moment, right? That's um, from what seems to be a shortage of stock generally. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Storage of stock. Um, I would say even the especially development, any any probably especially in Auckland, um, probably even in Hamilton as well, anything that can be developed. <laughs> pretty much uh, mom and dad investors, uh, they all want to be, you know, they all look at the grass on the, at the other side. Development, everybody talks about, you know, uh, huge numbers and whatnot, and they think that's uh, easy money. They all try to chase that gold. Um, <laughs> Everyone's so a developer in a hot market, eh? <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and look, I, I think the thing that everyone's realizing is that uh, sh uh, stock, uh, shortage of stock is not something you can solve overnight, right? Like it's not a thing that you can switch suddenly it's really easy to get uh, consent through the council. And like, this is a, a problem that is going to be with us for a number of years, wouldn't you say? Yeah, correct. I mean, the, there's, the thing is like, it's so, the, 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 the problem is so, in, in terms of limiting supply is so ingrained. I mean, like I used to be a civil engineer with Auckland Transport and all that. And it's a bureaucracy, not just with AT, but like the council and then any organization in general, the bigger they are, the more, red tape and more processes, the more people need to sign off on things. Same as the bank as well. <laughs> yeah. That's why the banks these days can't cope, you know, even though you say, oh, I just hire more people. Well, it's not that easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if only it was that easy, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah exactly. So, yeah, so you've got the, the obviously the RMA, I think the government's talking about uh, revamping it, but that's a big beast in itself, right? Um, uh, and uh, there's obviously uh, uh, supply shortages, the supply chain has been disrupted by COVID. Then you've got the labor shortages because obviously overseas people like a lot of pilots from uh, um, Philippines and, and, and things like that, what not Asia region, um, they, they can't get in, right? Mm. Um, obviously uh, immigration, New Zealand, for whatever reason, they are, they, they're not processing enough or I'm, obviously I'm not in that space, but we seem to have a, a, a well, even a bigger labor shortage now. Um, and a uh, combination of uh, obviously building materials going up, you know, probably 10% this year. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, so it's a lot of uh, things that's uh, limiting uh, supply and there's no easy um, way out of this, unfortunately. No, and again, uh, labor shortage is another thing which can't be solved. Unless, if you can't import people into the country, it takes yeah. three years to train a builder, right? So it's... it's Correct. Uh, yeah, that's right. And then, and then you've got the sector of the population will be like, oh, you know, you know, how, how come we letting people in? You know, we should be closing the border, you know, or with this uh, COVID fiasco. Uh, and at the same time, it's like, what about the jobs of Kiwis? So it becomes a political hot potato that uh, the government doesn't want, obviously want to. They know what economically, there's, we need the needs, but at the same time, politically, and also popularity, uh, right? Popularity wins what votes ultimately. So yeah, uh, the yeah. government, has, uh, uh, they got to balance both sides, the people, the businesses and the wealthy people donate to campaigns. Um, and then you got the, the average Kiwis that they obviously they think differently, right? So you've got the, the government has to balance both, which is very mm. difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other thing is to build enough houses to sort the shortage out, you yep. need to build them fairly uniformly would be probably the polite way to put it. But, you yep. know, you need to create 100 houses all the same real quick. And, and Kiwis traditionally don't like, don't like that model, right? I mean, <laughs> we don't like those yeah. kind of ticky-tacky houses that, that, yep. you can, that you can traditionally throw up. And, and Australia did it, right? They just get a bunch of bricks and they throw up exactly the same house a thousand yep. times over. But yeah, it happens a lot more with these like US, you can have a whole suburb, you know, a couple hundred houses and you only got about three choices, four choices, whatnot. Yeah. Um, but uh, ultimately that's kind of the easiest 
Well, I mean, uh, um, it's even like new cars, for example, if it's got too many trim models and all that stuff, then it increases the cost ultimately, yeah. right? The, the architect has to design 10, 10 different specs rather than just five or four. Yeah. So yeah. where is in the cost, time and money, you know, the, the better quality and, and diverse you want you want from the housing stock, the more it goes up in price. And mm. ultimately the market, you know, ultimately the market, a lot of people saying that property market is a bubble, et cetera. But working from a bank, well, if you don't if you don't have the right equity or deposit, you don't have the right income, sorry, we can't lend it to you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's right. So it's a very logical market from a banker's point of view. <laughs> yeah, we see the same thing. It's a tick box uh, exercise, but it's um, yeah, frustrating for the for the people trying to get into that, right? So they have to get that yeah. kind of coaching and and get them into the right place. So yeah. you go to a few auctions um, uh, in your spare time. Uh, what are you seeing there? Is there a lot getting passed through? Are people expecting too much, or are they are they generally getting picked up? Yeah, so for my clients, obviously, I give them like a, a market uh, update every week, you know, inside my own Facebook group. And generally, obviously, uh, the easiest thing is actually you can go buy auction, Barford auctions. I mean, that even though that's just for Auckland itself, but it kind of gives you a good idea how the how hot or cold the market is. And generally, these days, you're looking at, you know, 75, uh, average about 75% auction success rate. So that's really high. Um, some auctions, you could have like 20 auctions and only two got past them, right, which is like 18 or so. So that's pretty good odds. And um, we're also seeing record, just record prices. Like there was, um, I, I shared my own Facebook uh, page. Uh, there was a two bedroom unit in Mount Wellington. I've got six rentals and units in Mount Wellington, right? Not as nice as that one, but that one sold for $910,000 Wow! for two bedroom unit. And then yeah. five years five years ago, you could buy it for 500000 I mean, that, that's <laughs> it. That two bedrooms are in the first home buyer's market, right? That's where couples buy with a spare room. And 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 so 910 for a unit, it's, it's crazy, eh? I was just thinking yeah. about while, while you were talking about auctions uh, success rate, um, I happen to yeah. know that I'm not going to say which... Um, uh, which real estate agencies it is, but they actually measure them differently. So one okay. will say if you um, if an auction doesn't meet its reserve price, but you're negotiated to purchase, they would yep. call that a successful auction, whereas yep. another company wouldn't. Um, so oh, I, I'm not sure everyone knows that actually, but it's um, it, yeah. it is quite an interesting way of skewing the statistics. But well, um, but at the same time, like I look at like you can go to a path with auction website, right? If it says so, then you you, you got to trust them as so. Yeah, because obviously they go they're governed by um, REAA, right? So you just yeah you got to you got to trust them on that. Uh, otherwise, they're being breach, right? Uh, and the other thing is it could be under contract. So if it's yes. under contract, it says under contract, you just assume that it's going to be sold anyway. Yeah. And ultimately, look, if, if one or two doesn't get sold, who cares? You know, because yeah. you got to look at the whole statistics, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, whether it's sixty five percent or seventy five percent, a high percentage of houses are still getting bought at auction for sure. Yeah, well, yeah. well, well, I mean, the difference is more like you know sixty five versus seventy percent. You know, not yeah. not yeah, fifty five, right. seventy five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of percentages, uh, yeah. was it yesterday LVR announcement to the surprise of literally no one uh, in the market <laughs> who's been following the market. Yeah. No one was surprised, but the Reserve Bank came out and said. Hey, 1st of March, 70% uh, LVR for investment properties. 1st yep. uh, of May, 60% um, LVR. Um, kind of irrelevant because the banks are already at 60% <laughs> for their, uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, kind of an enforced measure. The banks can't adjust it. Um, from those dates, they are bound to those limits. So um, what's your thoughts? Did you think that the investors were a major cause of this problem uh, of this heated market or what's your sort of view on that? Um, well, there's, there, you can always find that information online in terms of like the percentage of um, buyers in the market. Uh, yeah. Last time I checked, it was really a lot, quite a long time ago. Uh, probably October maybe last year and I think the first home buyer makes up up to 30 or 40 percent of the market so that's huge right um and then investors at the time was only about 20 percent something like that so it's not not huge but obviously that now is always pretty, probably uh, a little bit more now so let's assume say property market uh, property investors make up say one third of the market um so if if the lvr uh decreased from 70 percent to 60 percent well you've got to remember last two years House prices have gone up probably 30%. Yeah. So the, the equity is you know, there, right? Yeah. The so so the, 
for the investors like myself, um, uh, and also for investors who've been around for say the last five years, well, the portfolio have gone up thirty percent. So mm-hmm. what's the ten percent extra requirement? No problem. Yeah. Um, if they can't make it, just you know get a valuation or whatever, and it will usually will get get you can squeeze it out of it, right? So I think I think the predominantly in terms of lending, what why seeing is it's definitely is going to hurt um, the beginning investors. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and also the LVR doesn't doesn't really impact on home buyers anyway. Um, so uh, if you want to buy a new bill, whatever, or, or, or if you've got good income uh, as a first home buyer, you want to apply for 90% funding, it's still available, right? And so it's not shop stopping the first home buyers. So, so there's not much impact there. Um, and then the, the investors, yes, the uh, requirements are higher, but at the same time, for uh, it's going to lock out some um, beginning beginner investors. Definitely, you know, investors with only maybe two rentals, that kind of thing, will probably uh, limit them. Um, for investors with three or f- more properties, generally, um, if they've been around the block for five years, usually it won't stop them. It's more yeah. the income that's probably going to uh, stop them rather than equity. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think, I think the, the the guys with heaps of equity, uh, so the experienced investors, traditionally aren't the ones that overpay for houses. They tend to invest by the numbers. Well, we so, try to drive down the prices. To well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Best you can. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I mean, you cannot blame a hot property market on one particular sector. It's like everything in economics, it is a compilation of several factors, right? Um, yeah. And but the ones who would tend to overpay would probably be those guys who are now just jumping into the investment market or thinking about jumping the investment market were liable to overpay um, but my, my suspicion is that uh, it's going to slightly affect the housing market in terms of um, maybe stagnating it for a couple of months but as yep. you say the first home buyers have always had this problem um, of not being able to get uh, enough funding for what they want to buy um yeah. so yeah it's uh, interesting times the good news about um uh, uh the banks bringing in this rule prior to the reserve bank enforcing it is that all of those people that had 80 percent letter of offers for investment are probably going to roll off in the next month or so and you'll see a real kind of click i think yeah yeah and also that that 80 percent uh, uh pre-approvals it will vary different between banks. Um, you know, as BNZ, for example, if you back, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, if you want 80% lending, well, you got to submit the credit and all that, you know, the, the process is very difficult and get, it's very hard to get approvals. Whereas other banks, I've heard um, the bankers, frontline bankers can self-approve 80%. So that's a massive difference, right? Yeah. You know, like, uh, for example, in the last financial year or even the last six months, you know, I've probably written uh, or draw down like 30 mil. Um, not one, not a single one is 80%, right? Yeah. Everything is 70% LVR for investment. So, mm. you know, from, from being that perspective, I don't think there's a major impact there. Yeah. Um, 10%, yeah, it's going to shut down some investors, like I said before. Um, and uh, But the thing is like the, uh, the alternative options, you know, that's more in your broker space. Um, there's definitely second tier lenders. A lot of second tier lenders do do eighty percent, seventy percent stuff like that. Well, actually, one just in that one that is known for um, allowing eighty percent on investment has just announced that they are following the sixty percent rule. I think they've probably got the whole of New Zealand turn up at their door. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so even this time around, the second tier lenders yeah. are starting to make that move, right? So, oh, I see. I think that's a combination of reasons as well, not just because they know that reserve banks going to put in place, but the, the simple fact is that they're just all overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. At BNZ, for example, we had issues at drawing down a property, a settlement on the Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, November, we started having problems on the Friday. You know, we just uh, like drawing down like sometimes three times the volume, obviously, you know, and uh, mm. we just couldn't cope. And then, and then obviously gradually start moving to Thursday. We've got Thursday's problem. And last Wednesday, I got drawdowns. I had to get escalated to get them drawn down on the Wednesday. So, yeah. <laughs> always settle on a monday the banks are quiet <laughs> that's my tip <laughs> yeah 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 that's right yeah 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 and hopefully they they, they had a good uh, weekend and no no hangover that's Friday right before. yeah 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 <laughs> so um what's your prediction i mean everyone wants to know what uh what interest rates yeah. are doing um hsbc just announced their 1.99 percent um what's yeah. your prediction for uh the end of 2021 where we're going to be seeing it 
Well, obviously, that's like, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> crystal ball. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and at the same time, you know, uh, even uh, I'm not a financial advisor, right? So, um, I, I mean, at this point, you know, obviously, a lot of economists are still predicting interest rate is going to be low forever. Um, I guess the, the question really is that uh, Reserve Bank OCR is already 0.25%. They can't really decrease it any further. Um, mm. But the thing is, like, um, what I'm seeing is obviously you've got the funding for lending program that came out uh, uh, in uh, 4th of December or something like that from the government. So basically the central bank, Reserve Bank, can lend to the main banks at 0.25%, right? And then, and then the bank, obviously... Like I don't work in Treasury Bank, right? But the thing is, like, the bank generally borrow a majority of uh, its funding from term deposit. So, you know, one-year term deposit might be at uh, 0.9%, 0.8%, and then now it dropped to 0.25% if mm -hmm. you can tap into the reserve bank funding. Ultimately, that's uh, – what's uh, my math is terrible now uh, – 6.65%, 6 something um, like that, 0.6% yep. margin. So, so theoretically, the, if the banks um, – Hopefully, I don't step in, uh, in line, uh, out of line in terms of the banking thing. <laughs> but from a business point of view, that means that the banks can drop their uh, retail rates by 0.6% and, and maintain the same profitability. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? Always, so, always follow that with in theory. because uh, In theory, of in course. Theory, right? In theory, they could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and ultimately, uh, at, at the same time, if you look at, um, in terms of the global kind of, uh, you know, what the reserve banks are doing, for example, I've seen, um, uh, I see. I think it was a report by uh, Saint Luciana or something like that. The Federal Reserve of America, they they uh, rec uh, they published some report saying that's like uh, forty percent of U.S. dollars been printed in one year alone, mm. right? And then imagine two hundred and fifty years prior, all of a sudden one year prints out forty percent of the total U.S. dollar in circulation, and that what that means is your the U.S. dollar is pretty much uh, devalued by forty percent if you look work on that logic, and then that. That extends to all the currencies in the world because everybody's looked up to the big brother, big uncle, Uncle Sam. Um, basically, every every other currency, every other like the reserve bank have to print forty percent just to maintain parity with the U.S. dollar. And then all the and then you have all this slush fund out of in the world looking for um, real assets to invest in to get a return out of. So supply and demand is my 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 personal feeling is that the debt is going to get cheaper if the central bank continues. To print uh, like this, um, obviously you've got inflation. Inflation start to pick up, right, um, and, and kind of offset some of that uh, funding drop. But at the same time, the key thing is that uh, a lot of people talk about inflation. But the thing is, house prices is not in inflation. They're part of the inflation measure. That's no. why our inflation is a low single digits. Yeah, they're not right? part of the basket of goods. Thank goodness. Exactly. Otherwise, our inflation would so, be about eight <laughs> percent. <laughs> no, probably would be double digit back to the seventies. Yeah, 70s, yeah huh? that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yes, there's some some pressure in terms of the inflation building up, but I think that's still within the reserve bank guideline, like between one to three percent. So mm. I think that we're nowhere near three percent anyway. So I don't think, especially you go look at uh, uh, this is more global economics. But if you look at Europe, if you look at UK, UK is still in lockdown. They've been locked mm. down like three, four times this past twelve months, and that's going to destroy that devastate the economy. You know, I mean, New Zealand's we're obviously very thankful. We only have kind of one and a half lockdowns. Um, so Europe is in, still in big trouble. Um, obviously America, right? Um, there's no really lockdowns, well, consistent lockdown in America. So, so the, the, the coronavirus uh, is impacting the Northern hemisphere much, much more. And the thing is the global economies are generally, you know, those bigger countries, bigger economies are all in the Northern hemisphere. So there's still a lot of foreign, uh, overseas um, uncertainty flowing there. I just don't, I don't think that uh, the Reserve Bank will play around with the, uh, the, the, uh, the OCI or the interest rates, right? I think that they, they, they're more likely to keep it lower for longer, just it's, in it's case. Because... Business confidence, isn't it? So Correct. for those who are yeah. exporting or involved with tourism or anything around that area, it's about yeah. maintaining business. And, and that's fundamentally what it is, right? Like why yeah. uh, that OCR translate through to residential yeah. mortgages but the property market's on a tier so typically if everything else was normal in the world they'd be raising rates at the moment but they yeah. they've got to keep that business confidence um high which is which is yeah. why they're pulling all these other levers with lvr and responsible yeah. lending high servicing calculations so can you afford right. that mortgage at seven percent or six percent um that's yeah. why they're pulling all those other levers not interest rates 
Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's, yeah. it's a very strange world yeah. at the moment for sure. Yeah, yeah, because that that lever, that OCR lever, applies to business loans as well, right? So, um, you, you you're gonna uh, obviously try to limit uh, if they raise that lever, um, they're gonna try to contain the house prices. But at the same time, they're gonna make uh, they're not gonna help struggling businesses. Mm. And uh, New Zealand, we still got an issue with obviously tourism, uh, international tourism, and you still got education sector. You know, the overseas uh, students. Market. These two sectors make up at least, you know, probably thirty percent uh, of the New Zealand economy, yep. and these two sectors are really in trouble right now, right? Because we just don't know when the border opens. Yep. Um, so, and then and then every other uh, every other business around that, especially if you look at Queenstown, pretty much the whole town is built on tourism. So, literally, the whole town of Queenstown is struggling. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's very strange. Obviously, the how the, the economy is kind of bounced back. In certain sectors, uh, but at the same time, you still got sectors like that, which is struggling big time and needing bailouts and all that stuff. Um, so I just don't think that uh, the central bank will play around with that lever. No. Um, yeah, yeah, they just can't afford that. And current, obviously, also you know, confidence, consumer confidence, ultimately lead to economic confidence. Yes. And confidence is like a freight train, right? Freight train uh, is that uh, the the momentum takes a, a long time to build up, and also. If you try to, you know, uh, apply the lever too suddenly, etc. If you apply the brakes bad too fast, happen. <laughs> bad things happen, right? And then, yeah. then the consequences happen. So that's something like uh, if I were a central banker, um, I would wait towards more, you know, just leave it as this, you know, see see it, um, uh, economy continue, you know, get out of this COVID first, mm. then then okay, then we can look at uh, um, potentially levers or things like that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so final final question. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you be <laughs> planting yourself right now? Where would you be hanging out? Uh, in the current state, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't well, be traveling nowhere. anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. let's say no. the let's say the uh, coronavirus is gone. Where would you be uh, hanging out? Well, well, I think I think you, 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 if coronavirus is still around, I would Queens. I'll go to Queenstown. Queenstown is a nice place, you know, I'll contribute to the local economy. Yeah. Um, well, if, if, if the gates are open, obviously, if everything returns to normal, which yeah. probably unlikely, uh, Italy, if that's the, that's probably the place that's I want to go it. to. Yeah, Italy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well i mean it's a, it's a remote working world now so uh, we can all we can all aim to be working from our favorite place so we're gonna we're gonna make those plans yeah. when the borders open again <laughs> well if i'm going overseas or holiday i'm gonna switch off <laughs> yeah well that's true yeah yeah hey all right go hey tell tell the um the viewers and the listeners um how they can get hold of you if they want to have a good old chat about investment property yeah, so I, um, well, you can uh, follow on my um, YouTube channel, I guess. Uh, you can Google Gary Lynn YouTube or property YouTube will show up. I've got like uh, over 100 videos on that talking about you know, different things about property. Um, they can follow my Facebook page, but uh, also my website, GaryLynn.co. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, my contact these are all around there. If they really want to get in touch with me, they will find it, right? So <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's the goal. Cool. Hey, thanks for dialing in. It's, uh, it's been great to chat with you. Cheers. All right, thanks, mate. Cheers.